Uh, so I'm speaking with composer Darren Fung, whose uh, varied projects over the years have led him uh, to composing many versatile scores from documentaries such as Lost Years uh, to the Jay Burrow show starring uh, dramedy Just Buried and small indie darlings like uh, Summerhood. Uh, one of his most uh, recent scores is the documentary uh, to the miniseries The Great Human Odyssey, which displays his amazing talents as a storyteller, uh, capable of emotions from big to small. Uh, Darren, thank you so much for, uh, for chatting today. And thanks for having me, Kai. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be here. So I guess to start off, I would love to um, uh, kind of know, not to be cheesy, but your human odyssey from the start. <laughs> <laughs> the Dare, the great Darren Odyssey. The great will. Darren Odyssey. Well, so what, what got you interested in music and what made you decide to pursue, pursue it as a profession? <laughs> well, the great Darren Odyssey started with, um, like all good Chinese boys, you know, uh, a tiger mom that insisted I play piano when I was three. Um, <laughs> No, you know, and I joke about that. You know, I'm really grateful for the fact that my mother. You know, we all live vicariously through um, through our through our kids, right? And right. so my joke is that you know, when I was a kid, I always wanted to play hockey as a kid, and so now now you know, my kid is going to be stuck playing hockey and like, yeah, music, music, right? But um, <laughs> but but I I ended up um I ended up um playing piano when I was three, and I did some violin lessons, and I took saxophone when I was in, in junior high, um. And my, my very first piece of music that I wrote, well, not my very first, but, you know, my first major piece of music that I wrote was um, uh, for the Young Composers Project in Edmonton with the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra. That's where I grew up in Canada. Right, right. And, um, and, and there was a fantastic little project where I got to basically write a piece of music. I got composition lessons for a few months um, with John Sassio, the composer and resident at the time. And uh, I got to basically write a piece of music for the orchestra and got performed. And so sort of at 15, I had that bug, you know, that bug in my, that, that, you know, I had the little bug there that said, yeah, that's really cool. It's right, fun. right. And, um, you know, and then, you know, there's also like, you know, you know, in high school band, you play all these movie scores and all that stuff. And just, you, you know, you love, you know, oh, there's a certain love for the genre. Like, you know, you just, you, you love good, hummable melodies. Um, you know, I went away to, to study composing at McGill in Montreal. And I, you know, for, for a couple of years, I had that artsy fartsy avant-garde um, contemporary music. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm too good for film music to my nose up and everything. <laughs> Um, and, 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 and don't, don't, no, don't get me wrong. Kai. Like I, I have a, I have a really, really deep rooted respect for that kind of stuff. I, right. I enjoy it. Um, I don't think I was any good at writing it. Um, you know, oh, you know, all my, you know, I like melodies. I like harmonies. I just, I, I really like the film genre, you know, the film music genre. And so after I graduated, I basically, how did I get into it? I just basically started doing, I started scoring student short films. Um, you know, I did an, an apprenticeship with a composer in Montreal, uh, where I was living at the time, uh, Pierre Daniel Rowe, who um, is still, you know, a great mentor to this day and just kind of, kind of showing me sort of the business aspects of it. And really what it just boiled down to, I just scored films and uh, I scored films, I scored shorts. You know, I didn't have a big computer rig set up at the time. Right. So what I ended up doing was that I ended up kind of convincing all of my friends from music school to come play on these, these, you know, do these epic scores for these like, you know, quite frankly, you know, pretty horrible student short films. Right. <laughs> and and so we'd be, we'd be in the recording studio at two in the morning at McGill, you know, recording these, these scores for pizza and beer. And that's sort of where I really got my chops in terms of learning how to write, for, not just write for orchestra, but really learning how to be effective in a studio. Because, you know, it's one thing if you're paying people and you're wasting their time, but it's another thing if it's two in the morning, they're, all they're getting is pizza and beer and they're grumpy and they're, they're grumpy and, you know, and you're wasting their time. So right. that's sort of how I cut my teeth in the business there. Wow. Um, so kind of looking at, at music now, uh, as you, as you know, you're grown up, you've, you've done, you've built a career for yourself. What does music mean to you on a personal level uh, so much that you, you know, you've dedicated your life to it? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. What does music mean to me? Uh, you know, uh, you live and you breathe music and, and sometimes, you know, it's funny because in the car, I hardly listen to music. I, I listen to NPR, I listen to talk room because I guess you're listening to music all the time. Right. Um, you know, it, it, I, I think it's almost to the point where you take it for granted. But you, you know, it, it, but like like anything else, like you know, you hear a good tune and you just like you're, you get really moved by it. Mm -hmm. And I think as a composer, what you really want is you want to move people with your music, right? You want people to say like, "Wow, wow, that was really freaking awesome," you know, and uh, and and 
yeah, you know, I don't know if that's really answering the question, but I think that, you know, my goal as a composer is just to be able to communicate that sort of emotion, right. you know, and, and I think uh, I think that's that's how I try to live my life as a composer anyways. I mean, and I take that, you know, from my end of the spectrum, because I'm not a musician. I'm actually, I went to film school and uh, I came from from that side of it. And that's how I got into film was through film music. But as a listener, that's, I don't know, it's something amazing when you connect with music and you feel that emotional response. And uh, I mean, that's, and for me, that's just, uh, it's yeah, you can't put it in words. It's hard to describe. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, and I think, you know, one of, part of the, one of the things that I, I, I did with, you know, student film or with young short filmmakers, and even today, like, you know, when I, when I have sort of, sort of a first time filmmaker or anything like that, I usually like to spend a little bit more of the budget than I normally would on live players. Like, you know, we, we had, like I said, like we would have, um, we would have these, like, you know, on, on some of these short films, that we would do, like we'd have like 20 piece orchestras, you know, right. doing it. And, and then what you do that you get the director who sees the picture, you know, married to the music for the first time. And it's magical. It's really magical. You know, I mean, and the process to get there is, 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 you know, it's a little bit of a long haul. But when you finally get to that point where you see, you know, really amazing musicians, you know, bringing your score to life and seeing that picture live and all together at the same time, it's really something pretty cool. Absolutely. And uh, speaking of process, I know it's going to differ from film to film, but or, or from project to project. But as a composer, what is like the first step of your creative process? Like, do you like to read the script if you can beforehand, or do you wait for the first cut and spot it? Uh, do you talk with the director and get his kind of or his or her kind of a uh, feel of it? What is your, kind of your number one step after you kind of get the job? I think it, you know, I think it really depends from project to project and where they are in the project, right? Right. Um, you know, let's, if they let's say for human a great human odyssey, you know. Well, well, so so I got brought on to great on, on to human, um, you know, fairly early on in the process, right? Like they were still shooting when I when I was being brought on, and sort of you know, a, a documentary like you know you're shooting for two you know one two years before you know and then you're cutting for a year almost before you, you get to that, right? So it's a very different process than than, than dramatic feature film. And so um, Niobe, the director, producer, writer, um, he was he was back in Edmonton, which um, you know, ironically, I never thought I'd be going back to Edmonton, you know, my hometown for work. But you know, <laughs> ta da, there you go. But you know, he had he had he he had he had just come back from shooting, and um, he showed me some rough um, some rough rushes from. Um, a, uh, some recreation that he did in Siberia, and you had some, you know, some of the, the uh, Siberian Inuit, you know, warriors or guy jumping over ice floes, right? And just, just the the environment was just phenomenal. And then, and, and then just the cinematography, you know, just, just like you know, you're just floored by it. Like it's like if you can imagine this dolly shot right. of of this of this of this sort of warrior jumping over ice floes, and you go like, holy. Holy crap! How did he? How did he shoot that? Right? How did he shoot that? And then you're going like, you know, he's explaining how they had drones over that. So that was my first experience with it. And I think it was sort of at that point with human that I realized, like, you know, because, you know, the 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 cinematography, the footage was so incredible. That's why he, Naomi, really wanted a big score. Like, you know, he wanted a big orchestral choral score for it. Because I was, was kind of like, you know, Naomi had approached me, you know. Um, you know, about a few months before that, and I'm kind of going like, yeah, that's great, but you know, like, you want, everyone wants orchestra and choir, but are you really going to have the money to do that? Because, that, because of the CBC project initially, we had to do it union, we had to do it, you know, in Canada. And so, so as you know, that's sort of expensive. Documentaries don't tend to have that sort of budget, right. you know, especially Canadian documentaries, right? Um, so once I sort of saw that picture, I sort of got it. Um, kind of fast forward a little, a, a little bit later in the process, now you'll be still shooting, but he's also cutting together some trailers. So he says, "Do you want to take a stab at maybe pre-writing some of the music for for these trailers?" So I pre-wrote some of the music for these trailers. It's basically on a script only and, and and description of what was going on, and um and and sort of you know Niobe and I were going back and forth a little bit, and we actually recorded those cues in um, in Prague. We went to Prague for another project. Yeah. And um, and those themes, you know, the the, the cues were, were 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 good cues. Um, they weren't perfect, right? But what it is, it it's kind of became the thematic backdrop of what you you hear of, you know, the Great Human Odyssey. And uh, well, I mean, that's incredible. Uh, <laughs> um, 
Uh, it went, because it, you, you look at a documentary, and it's, and it's about the you know uh, us as a species, and from the beginning of time up till now. What I and mean, you mentioned that he did. I mean, the score is, and I want to tell you personally. I mean, I'm not just to, like kiss your ass or anything. It's a really fantastic <laughs> score. It Thank is, you. It's Thank really you. great. I mean, I, did, I wasn't ex- in a, I, did, I wasn't expecting these big melodies, big orchestra, big choir, and um, was there ever? Th- I mean, did it ever kind of when you're figuring out to get to that point? Where you maybe do tribal music or primitive music, would kind of go kind of more the expected route. Was that ever talked about, or was it always just trying to be kind of this big encompassing kind of thing? Um, you know, I mean, the, you know, what, what's funny is I don't think we ever talked about going that, like, you know, sort of that tribal route or uh-huh. or, 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 or 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 sort of that ethnomusicology. Or, yeah, indi- route. like indigenous kind of music throughout the, I guess, yeah. the periods. You, you know, but but I think what we did, you know, it, it's funny because there's this one cue. Um, that that we were thinking about bringing in like like it, it was kind of we were in where were we I think we were in somewhere in Latin America and we were we were bringing I think it was in Chile that that, that they were in mm-hmm. and they were looking at bringing in some Chilean music in there and it just like it just didn't work right? uh-huh. it just didn't work and we ended up music editing something in there um, that worked actually really well um, but what's what's interesting about uh, what, what's interesting is that. Uh, with human artists, that I don't think that I treated it any differently than any other film. You we're talking about big scale emotions, right? We're talking right. about you know, the, you know, the great human odyssey. It's an epic journey with adversity, with mystery, with triumph, with failure, with all that sort of stuff. You know, those are all, all from a storytelling perspective. You know, oh, um, those, those are all great emotions to work with from a competition standpoint, right? So if you take a look at, um, you, you know, and I, I talk about this, this you know. Uh, you know, oh, I, I talk about this, you know, in other interviews as well too. But it, it's really not. I, I'm not a science guy. Like I've, I've never been a big science guy, right? You right. know, and and there's there's a lot of science sort of in in the project. But it's not about science. It's really about telling the story. You know, telling the story of of, of, of how humans have, have persevered throughout throughout history, and. You know, again, like I said, you know, there's basic emotion, then you just score those emotions, and that's how you come up with the score. Right. I mean, because I mean, with the fictional narrative, a uh, more traditional narrative, you have a protagonist, you have an antagonist, and you can pull emotions from the characters in that conflict. Um, so when you're pulling the emotions here, you're talking about this kind of big central emotions, but is, was it hard to create the, uh, I guess the overall, it's a three part miniseries, correct? It's like three episodes. So, so the initial, the initial version, the initial version, um, on CBC was a three and, and international, the three part miniseries. And then the PBS special was a two hour, a one, a one episode, two hour special. Right? Okay. So they, cut, they basically cut, um, they basically cut about, you know, they, they, they rejected, it, they retooled it for the PBS version. Um, but uh, where was this going? Oh, I was um, going to ask, like, was it hard to create, uh, were you treating it as kind of a, a, how would you create the structure for the entire score? Did it have kind of almost like a three-act structure? Were you kind of moving towards a some sort of uh, emotional resolution or climax? Or was it just kind of scoring the moments that the documentary was kind of uh, hitting? I mean, I, you know, the way the way that the film is, is you know, the way the film is envisioned, that, you know, there is a narrative arc. There has to be a narrative arc. Right. right. Um, you know, we're talking about, you know, a human sort of, you know, from the very beginning until like, you know, and then you're looking at sort of all, you know, the journey of all these amazing things that humans can do, like, like breath hold diving, or you're taking, you're taking a look at how the Papua New Guineans are just, are, 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 are very, um, are, 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 are so immune to like malaria, you know, to these right. horrific things of malaria. You're talking about, you know, adaptation and, and all that stuff. But 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 all all that being said, though, you know, th- there's this natural arc about you know how human, you know, and and but also about how as a warning sign we have to be careful about. Um, we have to be careful that if we don't take care of this earth, that we're kind of we're 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 getting the shits, right? right? You know exactly. that we need to be careful of it. Okay. So I, I think you, you know you follow that narrative arc, and it's not my job to create the narrative arc. You know that's the filmmaker's job, and I just what I do that I add to the narrative arc. Absolutely. Um, and I've talked to a lot of documentary composers about, you know, they, 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 and you've, you've done documentaries before before this as well, and working with all these uh, very important subjects and everything, and at least with this one, I think it's quite incredible, you know, looking at humanity, our consciousness, our existence, and, you know, uh, as a species, trying to study and understand our past, uh, you know, everything that we have, music being one of these things, that very human trait that we have. Uh, did, did you gain anything personally or emotionally or philosophically? Did you pull away from working on this project that kind of, I guess, enhanced you? You know, I think I learned a lot about 
about anthropology, I think, you know, right. I think I still learned a lot about where we came from as a species. Because again, this, I'm not really that kind of a science guy. I don't That's know right. if, I, if I was choosing the television, if this would be something that I personally, you know, would, would go look at. But that being said, I find it fascinating. I find it, you know, the material is very compelling, you know, and, and I think I always forget how compelling the material is because I've worked with it for you know for so long right. you know um you know especially when we you know we did a live show out of this right we created sort of you know the great human Odyssey in concert you know sort of like the blue planet series in concert or whatever like that and you know again you've been working with material and you know the storyline you know the arts and you know you know all that stuff you forget like it you forget how really incredible some of the stuff is you know right. and right. just that you know you've been working with it for such a long time absolutely um, but kind of now touching back a little bit on just your general work on, on not any film, and you dabble in quite a few genres uh, in your career. Is there any particular genre that uh, stands out to you as a favorite that you like to write music for? Comedy, drama, action? What, what kind of kind of gets your uh, creative chops really kind of extra going? <laughs> um, you know, I, I really love the feature film, the dramatic feature film genre. But yeah. I, I, you know, and I'm a big sci-fi nerd. Like, you oh, know, okay. I, 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 I would love to. I would love to write music for a big giant space opera. You know, that'd be great. You know, um, you know one of one of my one of my favorite shows in a while is Battlestar Galactica. You know, with Barry McCurry's oh, score because yeah, it was so it, it was so unconventional at the time, right? Um, I, I think you know in terms of what I like to write for. It's, I don't think it's a question for me in terms of genre of film. I think it's more of a genre of music. You know, I, I, I've always been an orchestra guy. You know, you know, a clear, you know, with great human artists, you can see that that's the sort of thing that I really excel at. What I really like about um, about film scoring is taking that sort of orchestral medium and then stretching it out a little bit further, whether it be working with working with ethnic musicians or whether whether it be working with sort of you know loops or or whether it be working with with you know a really kind of neat, neat synth synthy backdrop or whatever like that. I, I love kind of stretching that orchestral muscle into different directions, right. but the orchestra has always been that sort of backbone of what I do. And uh, and yeah. Do you, do you find it, I mean, we're living in a time where technology is growing and rapidly evolving and becoming easier to access. And, and these days people are looking to shrink budgets and get things done faster. Do you make it, is it harder for an orchestral guy like yourself to, uh, to, to, to keep that alive in this industry? Or do you find yourself, you know, hey, let's just do it. Do you find directors and producers going, can we just do it quicker and cheaper? Like, is that something that you have to fight? Um, you know, it, it is something you have to fight. And I think that, you know, it, it's frustrating because that, and, and also it, it's a changing aesthetic, you know, like, you right. know, 40, 50 years ago, everything was orchestra. And now, you know, I, I think you'd be lucky if, 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 50% of scores were like, you know, were like, you know, were orchestral scores. Right. Um, but that being said, you know, in terms of, you know, I, I think that you're always going to have people who are going to try to have you put, you know, push the envelope. And, and I, I think, you know, that's a good thing and a bad thing. You know, you know, you always want to be, you know, trying to push, push your limits in terms of creativity. But on the other hand, and, and you don't want to be given like, you know, you don't want to be given six months to do something that'll only take two months because then you get complacent and get lazy. Right. I think though what you really want to be able to do is that you want people to respect the work that you do and to value it. And I think, you know, you tie it back to that whole conversation about, you know, doing these short films, with, you know, these short films with 20 right. people person orchestras, you know, if you can convince filmmakers early on in the process that that's something you should invest in, um, You'll have them. You, you'll have them kind of convinced for converted for life, right? You're not going to have to have that fight ever again. Because that, you know, for them to go from orchestra to go back to stuff, sample stuff in the box, and you can do some incredible stuff in the box, right? You, right. you know, um, you know, I, I I can do a pretty decent orchestra, a fake, pretty decent fake orchestra from you know the limited studio that I have. There are certainly people I think who are much more talented at making those fake orchestras sound really good. But that's just something that I don't really. You know, I don't want to say it's something that I don't want to do, but it's just I feel that like I would much rather be out there working with the real orchestra, and that's where my talent as a composer lies. Really, really getting the best out of those players. Well, you definitely showed it with uh, the Great Human Odyssey, and and it's such a fantastic score. I'm glad it got a nice big release on Veres Sarabande, and thank and, you. Uh, congratulations on all that. But to to wrap everything up, I do want to ask. I know you mentioned Battlestar Galactica, so we can't use that. But I was going to ask you if you could uh, hypothetically, if you could score any film ever made with oh. uh, with no disrespect <laughs> to the original composer or the score, of course, pretending the original score never existed. Oh. What film would you choose? <laughs> 
Oh, you should have given this question to me in advance. <laughs> oh, gosh. Like right now, what was the first thing that popped in your head? <laughs> Battle so <Star laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> Well, I'm you sure Vera will take it as a compliment. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. You know, I, I, you know, like one of the Star Wars or one of the Star Treks. You oh, know, perfect. Like, yeah, space that, opera. Like, space opera stuff. You know, but but that being said, I, I think that, you know, there are so many great movies out there and so many great television shows out there. Right. Um, I, I just think it just, I just want to be working with good content, yeah. you know. I just want to be working with good people and good content, you know. And, and, you know, Human, it was funny, Human was one of the first projects where I really felt like, you know, um, that I had the resources to do what, you know, we could do. And it was still tight, you know, it was still yeah. tight. But it's not like, you know, I, I was fighting, I, I was fighting for more money to do this and more money to do that. You know, the orchestra itself on Human was, was pretty small. It was 45, I think, 45 players. And the choir was about 28, mm -hmm. you know. So it's not, a, it's not a particularly big orchestra. But on the other hand, you know, the sound that we were able to get was pretty, you know, pretty, pretty cool. Pretty I think. amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Darren, thank you so much for your time today. And uh, it was really a joy to, 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 to talk with you and get your insight and everything. And uh, I hope we can do it again in the future. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Kay. I appreciate it.